A few days ago, I decided to watch the entire Sherlock series. And I wasn't really convinced this was a good idea, since every episode is one hour and a half long, which is just as much as many feature films. But by the end of episode one, I was already hooked. For one main reason. Their transitions. If you try to look for it, you're gonna see all sorts of transitions. Fade ins and outs, straight cuts, opacity changes, transition over a transition, you can find pretty much anything. But they have a favorite one, for sure. Which it's usually named as a walk by or a pass by effect. It essentially transits from a scene to another, with an object or a person moving from a point to another on the frame. The object or the person is rotoscoped in each frame and the consecutive scene shows up as it moves. Another similar effect they've used quite often is to pass with the camera right in front of an object and then trans into another scene, creating a very smooth and relatable cut. They tend to bring characteristics of both scenes into the cut, so this makes it really, really pleasing to watch. I really believe it's important to see the definition of a transition, which is the process or a period of changing from one state of condition to another. So, if we look at it in a shallow way, it is pretty much anything that grabs our attention for being a change. Okay, so the first thing that really caught my attention was a door opening from a room to another that had actually no physical connection at all. This, for me, is creative storytelling. Changing from a location to another without the classic display of a wide shot makes it so dynamic that we really feel the intensity of the situation. Which, in this case, was represented by Watson's hurry to leave Baker Street and Sherlock's restless ambition to seek the truth, even in dangerous situations like in this scene. After that, I started to pay attention to every transition and it just blew my mind the amount of details they've inserted in so many ways. I'll start with the intro. They use what is called a tilt shift effect. Usually this is made with lenses for this purpose, but it can easily be faked in post-production if you want it. When they show the vast city of London in this effect, it appears that the city is so irrelevant and small when compared to their constant chase for mystery solving that we instantly dive into the detective's life. They constantly show texts and images flying around the scenes either to bring technology to the viewer's concern or to show Sherlock's discoveries. And this brings us incredibly close to the story, putting the viewer in a position of constant participation. All people are stupid. Another thing to be noticed is that when the text messages show up in the screen, the AF Generation Z font is used. While, when showing his deductions, P22 Johnson Underground was their choice. When they create graphic patterns like this one, it makes the viewer relate to the facts in a psychological and natural way, even if unconsciously. So this is extremely useful. And well, even though his assumptions are quite incredible, we always understand the reasons behind it, since they are all so well explained with the visuals on the screen and the constant sound effects for each information added to the story. Of course we know that one of the things that reminds us of the famous Sherlock Holmes is his constant brainstorming into his discoveries, in which he reveals all sorts of informations, presenting them to us. And even though they are used in a way to show his brilliance, sometimes I really think they just overdo it in the series. But if we let that aside and take a closer look into the sounds, it is just amazing how they use sound to promote more immersive Focus. cuts. Diegetic or non-diegetic, I could not say this enough. Sounds are the best way to include detailing in your scenes. So they accurately use it in their favor to pop up a scene so he's left trying to sort of cut his hair or to smoothly fork. introduce you to another one. Morning. They are used in very subtle ways or in strong ones to really make a point. Whoa. In many scenes, it may appear that the camera is filming from almost a hidden angle or through what is called a frame within a frame. That is an excellent technique to direct our eyes to the main focus of the scene, but keeping us in a position of not fully comprehending the scenario. Another thing that keeps you away from the truth are all the car scenes. Pretty much all the shots are taken from outside the cars. 
In the car, they constantly discuss cases. So you are nothing but a listener at this point, also distant from the truth that they are seeking. The only moments you can see inside the car is when it involves their personal lives or when the mystery is so close to them that they're actually inside it. No charge. Several times they use spin cuts that can very smartly show the temporal difference between scenes. Jumping forward or backwards, it takes you closer to the passage of time, even if sometimes it's just a psychological way to go inside a character's mind. He had a love the series deeply rely on being inside people's minds, and their form of storytelling is just great for this, taking us to a viewpoint that it actually gets hard sometimes to differ reality from imagination inside a character's mind. They constantly put you close to the character's point of view, sometimes even literally, bring you closer and closer to the story. The episodes are quite long, so they tend to create a motivation around each one of them, repeating ideas to make a point. In the third episode of season 3, they constantly show sets of stairs in the meaning of going in and out of a mind. They also use light to make transitions in numerous ways. It comes in a very dynamic form and it also brings tension to some scenes, so that when the dark part comes, we crave for light, and consequently, the new information that comes with it. In several episodes, they've made a transition that reminded me of train spotting, when it comes to falling down and going into the ground. This gives a very intense look of loss of consciousness. There is one particular transition I really love to see in this series, where they cut and cut back to moving from different locations occurring at the same time. This is vastly used in cinema, of course, in numerous ways, when showing relationship conflicts, telephone conversations, or situations that need some tension to show the hurry in the characters. But in Sherlock, they also use in a very interesting and comic way. What did he say? Cough. Oh dear. Mr. Windybank, you have been a complete and utter piss pot. This can be seen previously in the very famous scene with the rocket in The Spy Who Shagged Me. And some comedy that was also clearly brought from something English, other than Austin Powers, was Edgar Wright's jump cut. They are incredibly rich in content, but so fast that it can really bring some fun into the process in the series. And after watching the entire series, there's one thing that I always keep remembering, that above all, John Watson is a storyteller. That is why he has his blogs, but they also use it in a very clever way to depict Conan Doyle's original story. Sherlock's mystery solving were constantly in the newspapers back then, and so they show it to you in the adaptation. But there's another interesting thing to notice. If you try to close your eyes, you can actually understand so much of the story just by listening that this truly makes John Watson the ultimate storyteller. It is just as if he was presenting the series to you from the start we simply never heard his voice in a narrative format. And of course, after watching it, you might be... a bit... disappointed. But then again... Oh, everyone's a critic. What is up, guys? So, I know this is quite different from what I usually do, but I hope you liked it, because it was really fun to do it. And I'm really glad that YouTube has come to a point that people can really share just too much information and learn from each other. And so this is great. But apart from that, there, there's so much that I did not talk about, but I'm not going to do it because it's just going to be very, very tiring. But I'm going to link a, a guy in the description, which I really love to see him talking. And he did something about Sherlock, which is just great. So if you like... Just subscribe to him and whatever. And that's it. My name is Conrad and I make noises.